you know, I haven't really done any new content with the 10 millimeter M and P because I haven't really added anything to it. It's basically stayed the same. I've tried to get out to the range and put as many rounds through it as I can on and off. Uh, but as a lot of you may know, uh, 10 millimeter is not the cheapest round to just go plinking with. I brought enough ammo with me today that we will officially hit 3,000 rounds with the 10 millimeter MP. So we might as well just get started, put some rounds through this bad boy, get out of this frigid frigging cold, back to the office, and tell you what I think. You know, now that I think about it, it's been a little over a year since I've made any content with this 10mm M&P. It's well overdue, and I apologize, life has been busy, so let's just do a quick recap and we'll get started with an update. A lot of you know that I live in the Pacific Northwest, I'm out here in the shadow of the North Cascade mountain range, and I bought this 10mm M&P to use as kind of a, you know, outdoor gun, a gun that I can use when I'm out in the hills. It's 10 millimeter, it's optic ready, and it's a Smith & Wesson, so it fits my hand really well. I love the M&Ps. Not only that, but because it is an M&P, I can get an Apex trigger for it, and of course, all kinds of good additions from Floyd's Custom. Uh, things like magwells, mag extensions. The unfortunate thing is that when I was looking for the 10 millimeter m and the only one I could get my hands on is the four inch. That's not horrible, but at the time there was the four inch and a four and a quarter. I would have preferred the four and a quarter, but they didn't have it. Now they have a new one that's like, I don't know what it is, five and a half inches or something. It's a big long barrel uh, that is also compensated or well, technically I think it's ported. That one I would really like to try out. It seriously has my curiosity. And if Smith & Wesson would just sell the upper, the barrel and uh, slide combination on their website, I'd order one right now. In any event, I have the 4-inch version, and so far it's been a really solid gun. The triggers on these newer M&P 2.0s, you know, they aren't horrible. In fact, after a break-in period, they actually get pretty smooth. They aren't as good as the Apex that I have here on my competitor. But rest assured, if you get one of these newer M&Ps and you don't like the trigger, after a brief uh, break-in period, it is going to get better. I did actually buy an Apex trigger kind of specifically for this gun. But like I said, it's kind of an outdoor gun for me. And I've come to the conclusion that I don't necessarily need to put the Apex trigger in this 10 millimeter. The big thing that isn't going to change as you break in this gun is the amount of take up that the trigger has. For most of my guns, I do prefer to get rid of that take up. I'm not a big fan of having to pull the trigger so far before I hit the wall. Because of what I've purposed this one for, um, strictly for hiking and outdoor type use, I'm going to go ahead and keep the amount of take up that's in there. I'm going to take that apex trigger that I have put to the side and I'm probably going to go ahead and order a four and a quarter inch nine millimeter M and P just to use with that trigger. I know that seems excessive, but that's, that's a whole different uh, video altogether. So right now I have like 3000 rounds total uh, through the 10 millimeter. The vast majority of that is like the cheapest 180 grain range ammo that I can find. Okay, so for today's video, I am using RBS ammo. This is 180 grain. These are remanufactured. I'm not sponsored by these guys or anything. It's just a local company. Um, I've used their nine millimeter quite a bit over the last few years when COVID came and there was an ammo drought. RBS was the only ammo that I could find, let alone find at a reasonable price. Also, I like to support local business. So that's what I'm using today. Let's face it, nobody can really afford to put the high powered, full strength 10 millimeter ammo uh, through their guns all the time. Sure, I have ran some of that through this gun. I've used some hard cast, I've used various different uh, like self-defense type ammos through it. I actually have like two boxes of the Underwood Extreme Penetrators, I think it is. 
Those are sitting in a box over there. Um, I, I put those in it when I'm actually hiking, but that's not the kind of ammo that people regularly target shoot with. I mean, some of that stuff that I've used is over $2 a round. Now, anybody out there that's saying that all they put through their 10 millimeter is the full power, um, you know, defensive, hard cast, uh, 10 millimeter ammo, and they have these crazy round counts. It, to be honest, they're just full of shit. I watched one recently where the guy was talking about how he had like 5,000 rounds of uh, hard cast ammo through his 10 millimeter, and I did some quick math on that after uh, doing a little web search to see what that brand cost, and it's just not feasible. Nobody's doing that. When you guys watch those videos, just do the math for yourself and decide whether or not uh, those people are being completely honest with you. That being said, I really only have maybe a few hundred rounds of that ammo through my gun. I'm really hesitant to spend that kind of money on ammo to put through a gun that, you know, I don't necessarily shoot every weekend when I go out shooting. I might take the 10 millimeter out with me every two to three times that I hit the range. And I'm not gonna go dump a bunch of ammo that's, you know, a dollar fifty to two dollars a round. I'm gonna shoot the cheap stuff. From the heavy duty ammo that I have used, the full strength stuff, I can tell you that I haven't had any issues. I've seen people complain about the feeding issues and that's not something that I've personally experienced for myself. One of the things that I have seen for myself is that those uh, more powerful 10 millimeter rounds coming out of the four inch M&P, the four inch M&P has a real attitude with that ammo, you know, as far as recoil goes. I'd be willing to bet that's why Smith & Wesson came out with that uh, longer barreled ported version. The more expensive, more high power 10 millimeter ammo tends to come in boxes of 20. And when I shoot that stuff, it's like a box here, a box there, you know, maybe once a month I might get some of that stuff and take with me. I'm damn sure not sitting down and burning through a couple hundred rounds of that stuff in one session. Believe me, you wouldn't want to with a four inch M&P. Good news though, if you have this gun, or even the four and a quarter, and you want to tame that recoil a little bit, Floyd's Custom Shop does port the 10 millimeter m and I'll of course leave a link down there with a discount code if you guys want to go check them out. Um, of course, I do have the Floyd's Custom Magwell and the Mag Extensions for this gun. I definitely recommend that you guys go check those out. Apparently it's still hunting season or whatever. I've had a few trucks drive by. I don't think they're real happy with me, but you know, what can you do if you're trying to hunt by an area that is known for being a target shooting area? You're in the wrong spot, buddy. When I'm using the cheaper, more standard 180 grain range ammo, you know the stuff, the s and uh, AAC has some out now, or oh, I even picked some up at uh, North Sound Firearms the last time I went over there from RBS. The recoil from those 180 grain rounds through the four inch M&P, it's not, it doesn't feel that much stronger than what one of my nine millimeters does. That's how you can tell that that range ammo isn't really full powered 10 millimeter. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want more power out of your 10 millimeter ammo, you just have to pony up the cash for it. Now, sure, that 180 grain does still have a little bit of bite to it, but it's it's not that much more than the nine millimeter. So it's not horrible. I've actually really been happy with this gun, how it's performed over the last year or so that I've had it. In terms of accuracy, it has kind of surprised me. Being a 10 millimeter, the four inch is kind of a short uh, barrel but it does not disappoint when I take it to the indoor range. That's when I can really see what the accuracy level is with this gun. And again, I'm happy with it. Whether I use this gun for self-defense or out in the woods for wild animal defense, I am absolutely confident that my shots are going to go where I want them to go. Maybe that's because I have the Holosun 507C mounted to the 10 millimeter. Maybe it's because I use the C&H precision mounting plate instead of the plastic one that comes with the core system. Who knows? What I do know is this. I've seen the comments and there's a lot of people out there who have this outlook that if you're going to have a 10 millimeter, if you're going to trust a 10 millimeter, it has to be a Glock. I don't agree. Quite frankly, I think that that line of thinking is bullshit. 
I've spent the last year pumping ammo through my Smith & Wesson 10mm M&P, and my experience has been nothing but positive. Now, I have seen other people online who have had little issues here and there. Mine, though. Mine has done really well. I do think that the mags could use a slightly stronger spring. You can remove those and you can give them just a, a little bit of a stretch and it's gonna give them that extra bit of power that they need. Or there are other spring options through companies like Springer Precision. You know what though, if you are looking for a 10 millimeter that isn't a Glock, the M&P 10 millimeter could very well be a great contender for you. If you're not concerned about barrel length, definitely take a look at the ported version. I personally think that one is going to be a beast. I haven't gotten one yet, but I'm looking at one currently. What else can I say though? It's a Smith & Wesson, and it doesn't disappoint. It's everything that I would expect out of an M&P. That's it for today, guys. I've got 3,000 rounds through this gun. I'm going to keep shooting it. I'm going to keep carrying it when I'm out there hiking, and you know what? If anything pops up that's out of the ordinary, I'll go ahead and I'll do an update video. Till then, just keep getting as much range time in as you can, and I'll see you back here real soon.